Sean the Snowman here and today is part two of my Franken player series. If you haven't checked out part one, I took different pieces from the top players on the ATP tour and I put them together to construct one perfect 2018 male tennis player. Today I'm going to do the same but on the WTA side, so the women's game. And, uh, and without further ado, let's uh, create our perfect 2018 women's tennis star. Let's begin with the most important shot in the game, the serve, and I'm going to split it up into two different parts, the deuce side and the add side. Give me Karolina Pliskova's deuce serve. She is number two in aces this year. The tall Czech finished number one in that category, 2015, 2016, and 2017, and she hits her serve very flat, generates a wealth of power. On the other side, I'm going with Petra Kvitova's add serve. And she is also in the top five in aces this season, but it's a much different kind of serve. Her, she's a natural lefty, so she gets a lot of kick out wide, and she can slice it off the court much like uh, Rafael Nadal, Denis Shapovalov, some of the better lefty servers. So I like those two contrasting styles, the power of Pliskova and the, uh, the trickiness of Kvitova. That's what I'm going with for our, our Franken player serve. How about the return of Victoria Azarenka, the two-time Australian Open champion, has been out of the game a lot the last couple of years, had her pregnancy and then uh, the long custody battle. So she's been pretty inconsistent, but of course she's still known for her supreme timing on the return end of the court. Maybe she's not like Novak Djokovic in terms of uh, the all-time pantheon of greatest returners ever. Djokovic probably number one in that category. On the women's side, Azarenka, you know, She's probably top 10, top 15, one of the best of all time though, and certainly the best in the game today, still at her age. So I will take Azarenka's return. Naomi Osaka's forehand. Boy, her ascension into stardom this season has just been so refreshing. She's got punishing ground strokes on the forehand wing and it's such easy power. What a big ball and she's still able to play with great margin, winning Indian Wells back in March. Of course, the US Open and recently making the final in Tokyo. I went with Osaka over maybe a player like Madison Keys because although Keys probably has just a little bit more pop on the forehand side, Osaka is able to blend power with control, rarely hits errors on the forehand side. And that's why I like uh, the Japanese play on the forehand wing. For the backhand, I am going with Yelena Ostapenko's backhand. The Latvian live wire has been my favorite player on the WTA Tour pretty much ever since she won Roland Garros about a year and a half ago. I kind of compare her to a mobile artillery unit. She's not the most fleet of foot, a slightly below average mover, but when she gets her feet set and really squares up to the ball, she can absolutely blister the ball on the backhand side. Venus Williams volleying. We all know she is a powerful baseliner, but also a very attacking style of play. Certainly her five Wimbledon singles titles can attest to that. She's uh, very comfortable around the net at six foot one. She has great reach. And of course, we all know about the double success that she has had with Serena throughout the year. So Venus Williams, this is a no brainer. I'm going with your volleying and your touch around the net. Simona Halep's defense. She has probably had the most success the last couple of years on the WTA Tour. This season, 56% of return games won. Just think about that. That means she's winning more games than her uh, opponent's servers are winning. She's basically a human backboard, can chase down any ball, even at five foot six. her defense, the most supreme in the land. Shea Su Wei's slice. I love watching this Taiwanese player go. She, uh, she's she been a giant killer this year, taking out number three, Garbinia Muguruza at the Australian Open and the aforementioned number one Halep at this year's Wimbledon. She has got such an unorthodox style. It's not regular tennis by any means, but what she lacks in power, she makes up with, with a nasty slice, can hit a lot of just crazy unorthodox shots, and I, I love her slice ability. Let's move to some physical attributes now. I want Sam Stozer's biceps, 34-year-old Aussie and former 2011 US Open champion. She is doing fine up top. And then down below, I want Dominika Sibelkova's quads. She uh, She's made the quarterfinals in both Beijing and Wuhan this year. And recently she's been hot at the Grand Slams, round of 16 at the US Open quarterfinals in Wimbledon, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do with her great core strength, her balance, 
and her leg muscles. So Sybil Koba, your quads. And then I want Garbinia Muguruza's wingspan. She is certainly no Mo Bamba or Manute Bowl by any means, but she's a member of the six foot club and Muguruza can pretty much get her hand on any ball. She's not as quick as Halep or Sloane Stevens, but it's, it's very hard to hit clean winners on her because of that wingspan. All right, I think our Franken player is looking good at this point. Let's keep it going. Give me Angelique Kerber's flexibility. The German is known for her ability to get low, able to redirect any ball. It's kind of like a striker in soccer, how you can just take a cross and redirect it ever so slightly, just glance it into the far post. That's what Kerber does. She does it a few times a match, honestly. You think she's gonna fall over, lose her balance, but so good at just getting low and just carefully pinging it over the net. Sloane Stevens' is speed. She is the most athletic player on the tour, in my opinion. A unique combination of offense and defense. You can't really label her as a counter puncher or an attacking player. She's everything, and her speed is her best quality. All right, now it gets really fun. Daria Kazatkina's variety. You might know her as uh, the Indian Wells finalist this season. She just has an amazing mix to her game, a unique feel for how a match is being played. She can implement drop shots, tricky top spins. She does a, a jumping backhand smash at times. She just knows when to shake it up and you know every single shot is in her tool bag. If tennis is an art form, this young 21 year old is a true Rembrandt. I love the variety in Dasha Kazakina's game. From one young star to another, give me Arena Sapolenka's power for her ideal 2018 women's tennis player. She, uh, she skyrocketed lately to 11 in the singles rankings, a title at New Haven this year, US Open round of 16, and a Wuhan title. Sabalenka just looks so mean. I mean, when she hits a ball, it looks like the ball personally insulted her. There's so much venom, so much malice in all of her strikes, and she is able to just overpower opponents and take the racket completely out of your hands. Caroline Wozniacki's fitness and conditioning ran a 3.26 marathon time at the 2014 New York City Marathon. Admittedly, after that, she said she wasn't even really training that hard for that particular race. Uh, Wozniacki, never out of breath, loves grinding rallies, and she can wear you down like none other. The best fitness in the game for years now. Pretty much since she got the number one ranking back in 2010, she has been the model of consistency in terms of fitness. Maria Sharapova's grunt, one of the most intense players in the game. She was 23-0 in night matches on Arthur Ashe Stadium before this last US Open loss to Carla Suarez Navarro, but certainly so much passion. Sharapova wears her heart out on her sleeve, and wherever she goes because of that grunt, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to hear her. Speaking of Suarez Navarro, let's take Carla's class. She may have a haircut that is straight from the 70s, but Carla Suarez Navarro, CSN as she's known, one of the most likable players on the tour, so kind, so respectful to all the other players in the WTA world, and, uh, and I don't think any player minds going up against her. In fact, she is just a, a delight to be around from what I understand. One of the elder states women in the, uh, the tennis world, but certainly, Carla Suarez Navarro, I'm taking your class for our Franken player. Serena Williams' will to win. I know what you're thinking. I could have gone with Serena for a myriad of other attributes here for our ideal women's tennis player. Sure, the, the forehand, the serve, the power, the biceps, yeah, they all make sense, but I think her greatest attribute is her will to win. Just a true champion in every sense of the word, and Serena transcends the sport of tennis transcends women's tennis you know oftentimes you hear about the best women's athletes in the world whether it's uh, brianna stewart or alex morgan or lindsey vaughn michaela schifrin it's like they're great athletes but for some reason we kind of contain them to just a, a women's athletic world but serena knocks that door down i mean she kicks that over she transcends women's tennis and serena williams one of the greatest athletes of all time Jeannie Bouchard's popularity. How about the Canadian 1.8 million followers on Instagram? 
and she is so affable, so good at building her brand, whether she is going out on dates with random Twitter followers or just doing anything. It seems like she is so popular with fans worldwide. And if you could, if you could build a perfect ratio between matches won to popularity, it, it would be Jeannie Bouchard's. She hasn't won a ton of matches the last few seasons, but she's still one of the most popular players on the tour. Coco Vandeweghe's jeans. No, I'm not talking about the denim material. I'm talking about Coco's bloodline. Her lineage is sweeter than just about anyone else's. Her mom was an Olympic swimmer. Her maternal grandparents' grandma was a Miss America. Her grandpa played for the New York Knicks. She's got another great uncle who played in the NBA and perhaps her most famous relative, her uncle Kiki Vandeweghe, a two-time NBA All-Star, played in the 1980s with the Denver Nuggets and the Portland Trail Blazers. I know Vandeweghe puts in a lot of hard work just like anyone else, but certainly her genes did no disservice to her of being such a success in the tennis world. For our name, I'm going with Margarita Gasparian. This one is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, who doesn't love on a, a blistering hot summer day? Who doesn't love a refreshing, ice-cold Gasparian? The final aspect to our women's Franken player, Darren Cahill's coaching. He took over as Simona Halep's full-time coach in 2016. And although they have had their arguments, their disagreements, I know Cahill didn't like Halep's attitude for a while, threatened to leave her. But in the last couple of seasons, he has helped Halep reach three Grand Slam finals, including the French Open title this season. Halep now 49 weeks at number one, almost all of this season. And I just feel like Cahill, what he's done with the 5-6 Simona Halep, he's maximized her potential to the fullest. And I would be honored if the killer was coaching our ideal 2018 women's tennis player. All right, that'll just about do it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. Leave a comment if you agree or disagree with anything I said. I love me some public discourse a la Neil Postman, so please leave some comments. But uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching and uh, happy tennis.